I'm Nanette White and I'm here today with Dr. Manan Khan of North Oaks Endocrinology Clinic in Livingston and Hammond. Dr. Khan, could you tell us a little bit about yourself? Thank you for having me, Nanette. My name is Manan Khan. I'm an endocrinologist here at North Oaks uh, Medical Health Center. I also practice in Livingston Parish at, in Satsuma. I went to medical school at Tulane University School of Medicine in New Orleans. I went on to complete my residency training in internal medicine at Oshner Medical Center, where I'm board certified in internal medicine. I went on to do my fellowship training at endocrinology in North Oaks, I mean, endocrinology at Oshner uh -huh. before joining North Oaks Medical Center. Well, we're very pleased to have you. And I understand that personally you have some news as well? Yes, I was recently married four and, uh, and a half months now to my lovely wife, Akfa Khalid. She's finishing up her dental school in Pittsburgh, uh, Pennsylvania right now. Well, congratulations, and I know you'll be happy when she's done so she can join you. Yes, yeah, so I'll be really excited. Well, today we're going to talk a little bit about diabetes and some of the alternate, or actually the newer medication therapies that are available to diabetics. Dr. Khan, can you kind of start us off and tell us a little bit about what diabetes is? Yes, so diabetes comprises about 75 to 80 percent of my practice. Diabetes is a chronic medical condition which uh, is related to high blood sugars in the blood. So blood glucose rises in the blood in relation to food. So once we take food in, our blood sugar levels rise. Mm -hmm. Insulin is then secreted, which is a hormone by the pancreas, in relationship to the blood glucose rising. In diabetes, there's a maladaption or a non-functioning of this insulin uh, in relation to the blood glucose rising. So we have two different types of type uh, 1 and type 2 diabetes. In type 1 diabetes, there's no insulin production. And this is where we oftentimes hear about juvenile diabetes. Mm -hmm. This is in the young or in young adults where they have to take insulin at all the time. Whereas in type 2 diabetes, not only is there not enough insulin production, but there's a maladaption to insulin. And this ha affects many different organ systems. Uh, in type 2 diabetes, this is found in older adults mm -hmm. and in the elderly population where there's not enough insulin around. That's why we can use medication to boost the insulin levels mm -hmm. in the blood. And these are some of the newer medications that we have. Okay, can you tell us a little bit about some of the health problems that are associated with diabetes? Yeah, so diabetes affects many different health uh, organs. So it can affect the eyes, diabetic retinopathy, it can affect the kidneys, diabetic nephropathy, it can affect the urogenital system and uh, erectile dysfunction as well. Well, what are some of the newer non-insulin medications that are available to diabetics? So there's two new classes of medications. One is GLP-1 receptor agonist, and another one is SGLT-2 receptor antagonist. These are just fancy terms for new different classes of medication. GLP-1 receptor agonist, these are the most promising new drugs that we have on the market. They're injectable therapies, mm -hmm. either taking once daily or once weekly. You may have heard of some of these on TV. Victoza mm -hmm. might have been one, mm -hmm. Trulicity is another one, and the newest one on the market is Ozempic. Many of these drugs have great side effects such as weight loss. Oh, so, I like that. <laughs> a lot of people do like that, so that's why even though it's an injection, it can actually uh, reduce the weight. Okay, and so are there any other side effects or? Benefits. Or benefits, intent? right. Yeah, definitely, great question, Danette. So benefits of this medication is that it helps reduce weight. It also helps reduce blood sugar values in relation to eating. So they work on three different systems primarily. One is in the brain to help you reduce the appetite. Mm -hmm. Another one is in the stomach to help reduce the feeling of being hungry all the time. Mm -hmm. And the third one is boost insulin levels in the pancreas. So it leaves the insulin uh, around a lot longer. And you did say these are injectables? These are injectable therapies, either once daily, like Victoza, or once weekly, like Trulicity or Ozempic or Bayer, uh, Bidurion. Okay, great. So the other one that you mentioned, the SGLT2 inhibitors, how do those work? So these are oral medications which are just taken once daily in the morning. They work kind of like a diuretic. They make you urinate out blood sugars mm -hmm. in a safe manner. So okay. they don't cause low blood sugar. Neither do the GLP-1 receptor agonists. Oh. So these are a big benefit to these two classes of medications. What are some of the other benefits and side effects of these? So great. So the great benefits are these can be added on to other medications. So if you're already taking metformin, 
They could be taken in conjunction with the metformin. Mm -hmm. Also, another uh, benefit of this medication is that it reduces blood sugar throughout the day. So it reduces after you eat lunch, after you eat dinner, your blood sugar values will still remain low. So you won't get that postprandial high blood sugar. Some of the side effects of the SGLT2, unfortunately, is that you can get a yeast infection. About 7% mm -hmm. of people can get this. But that would be with any kind of diuretic because you're urinating out sugar. Mm -hmm. So the main thing is to remain hydrated and to drink plenty of water and keep yourself very clean. Well, those are good, good habits to have anyway. We should yes, all drink yeah. more water. Um, are these medications expensive? So they can be expensive to certain uh, insurance plans, but the great thing is, is many of these drugs are covered on formulary now. Okay. So if you have commercially insured patients, which many of our patients are, mm -hmm. they are covered by copay cards, which reduce or eliminate any kind of copay available. And many of these drugs are also covered on Medicare and Medicaid plans. Oh, sounds great. So do I have to fail any other tests to get these medications? No, not necessarily. According to the ACE, which is American Association of Clinical Endocrinologists, after metformin, either one of these classes of drugs can be used. So you don't necessarily have to fail another class of medication, such as sulfonylurea, to start this medication. So if you're on your Amaryl, you can add this medication to those, or you can reduce that medication in order to start these medications. So you don't necessarily have to fail a class of medication. And is my uh, primary care provider able to uh, prescribe these medications or do I have to see a specialist? So many of these medications can be prescribed by your primary care physician. Oftentimes the primary care physician defer to the endocrinologist to start these medications because they may not feel as comfortable to start these medications. So we'd be more than happy to start these medications. You, you probably have a little bit more knowledge about these. We pro we've gone through two years of fellowship training for this so we use it on a daily basis. And so will you provide samples? Absolutely. So we have a great relationship with the pharmaceutical industry in the sense that they provide us many samples for their medications. So patients don't have to fear that they're going home on a new medication without starting a sample. We provide samples for all of our new medications. That's great. Now tell me, do I have to have any special blood tests before starting this medication? Because I'm a little bit queasy when it comes to blood tests. So there's a simple blood test that we do that's just a finger prick called an A1C. We do this on all of our patients that come into the office and it's uh, part of the visit copay. And the reason we do that is so we can get a three month average of the blood sugar values. Great. Well, this has been very informative, Dr. Khan, and I really appreciate your um, spending a little bit of time with us today to educate our, our viewers and patients about diabetes. So if you have any questions, if you have any questions about any of the information covered today or you feel you need to schedule an appointment with an endocrinologist, you can call 985-230-2778 in Hammond or in Livingston you can call 844-277-8669. Or you can always visit our website at www.northoaks.org for more information. Oh, it appears we do have one question coming in, um, which we can take for you, Dr. Khan, if you okay. have a, a minute. Absolutely. Okay. Is there an increased risk of hypoglycemia as other classes of diabetic medications are added? So that's a great question. So if you add these medications to other class of medications, such as sulfonylurea, like Amaro, mm -hmm. or to insulin, there is a risk of hypoglycemia. However, if you stop the other medications, there's no risk of inherent hypoglycemia with these two classes of medications. So if you start these medications in addition to metformin, there's no risk of hypoglycemia involved. That's awesome. Well, Dr. Khan, we, again, we really appreciate you being with us today, and we thank all of you for joining us. And again, if you have questions, you can always turn to our website, www.northoaks.org. Thank you, and have a great day.